What's good? What's good? We're back. You're truly one and only Paul Pigger, host of the Paul Pigger Podcast, aka Triple P, aka the Common Sense Podcast, your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and much, much more. Today I'm gonna to react to an interesting video. Um, it's a video of Wendy Day talking about the cost of breaking artists today. And um, why is this important? Because I own Promo Palace LLC. Uh, promopiles.biz. I've actually been promoting music since the MySpace days. I started with um, targeted Twitter followers with a software called Tweet Big, and then they had API issues, and then I realized I couldn't be a one-trick pony, and I had to try to promote on every single platform that was available to artists um, at the time or today. Um, so before I get into this video, it's only right that I play an advertisement from promopiles.biz. Marketing and promotion? Then look no further than Promo Palace LLC, your one stop shop for all music promotion services. Services include Spotify playlist pitching, YouTube yep. video promotion, record yep. pool promotion, blog yep. placements, radio yep. airplay promotion, SoundCloud yep. promotion, and much more. With over 2,000 customers and over 10 years of experience in online promotion, Promo Palace LLC is a company you can trust. For more info, please go to promopalace.biz. See you there. That's right. You heard a beautiful lady from your online marketing promotion for your music product brand or service. Please go to promopalace.biz. You can also email me at promopalace1 at gmail.com. Um, of course, my email is sold over and over again by companies that sell emails for uh, playlist curators. And I used to do internet radio, so they sell my email over and over again, which saves me a lot of time promoting to artists and musicians but you can get 15 percent off music promo at promopiles.biz use coupon code labor day 2023 as that is the last coupon code that i generated for our website i right, let's get into it um the great windy day you were saying that like in order to break an artist i think in the video it break an artist might have meant uh you know getting on like a billboard chart something significant something like that i think the number you had said a couple of years ago to break an artist was 150 grand yes is, is have you seen even in two years like you're saying you know nine months everything kind of changes and yep. since then is the number more or less the same or no it's the same it's the same yeah. um and and when i'm saying break an artist i mean get them to the point where there's money coming back into the company because it's going to cost you more than 150 to to build your career let me start right there. So breaking artists nowadays isn't making the song a hit record on radio is basically what she just said. Breaking the artist is get to a point to generate revenue. And it's crazy to me how um, clients and customers, I ain't gonna call none out by names, but they come to you with, you know, a couple hundred dollars, a few hundred dollars, and expect to see um, a profit back. When Wendy Day is telling you clearly, like a hundred fifty thousand, just to get you to the point where you start generating income off your music from the streams, from paid shows, from features. But it ain't necessarily mean that you're a household name, that you're a superstar, that you're you're popping, but that's 150 of new money so when the income comes back in and show money comes first merchandise um money comes next then publishing and stream oh yeah and i forgot to throw merch and nowadays you 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 make the merch before you make the music that's that's the protocol nowadays if you're making music and you ain't made merch yet you gotta flip-flop those because you're doing it ass backwards and, you know follow afterwards you're gonna have to put that money back into the company and keep spending money going forward so it takes me i don't know i can't speak for anybody else but it takes me 150 to get that artist to that point where there's money coming back in it's not necessarily to break them it doesn't mean they're going to spend 150 and now they're drink that's right. not what i'm saying <laughs> and let me stop right there um, being from Fayetteville, North Carolina, shout out to J. Cole. We have another artist, Moray. Um, I don't know 
totally if this is factual, but I've heard that they spent around um, close to a quarter of a million to break his single um, on YouTube, The Quicksand. And when they broke his joint, now that was around a time when it was like six month lockdown. So there was no street teaming going on. There was no in-house interviews. They were all remote. And all the remote interviews were more likely reserved for all the people who were doing in-house interviews originally, all the, the bigger bigger names. They um, didn't do no features with them. And so he couldn't do paid shows either. So he got quicksand blown up, and you can't do paid shows and perform the song why the song is blowing up on YouTube. And then they also had um, Marshmello co-signing the music videos with comments, and they put it on the Marshmello playlist, like number two on the playlist. So it gets traction on the Marshmello playlist, and then Spotify starts picking up. See, see, that's the thing. Even though the record was blowing up on YouTube, and they were spending all this money on YouTube, and it was a real good song. It's a Quicksand is a real good song. You know, to me, it, it deserved to be a um, YouTube hit. I don't think it was really a radio hit. I don't know if it was really playing on. I, I can't say it was really a radio hit. And I don't know if they weren't necessarily working radio. They were they were just mainly running YouTube. And for me as a music promoter, YouTube is the number one platform that I always try to push in TikTok. So even then, my point is even then, they didn't really totally break him as an artist, he still has a lot of work to do, you know, but they, you know, put enough money in to generate enough where they get, got royalties back at least during the pandemic. Um, and they probably should have, it would have been really, the timing was probably terrible. Time was probably terrible because he couldn't do shows and while you're doing shows, uh, you could be selling the merch and, it's hard to sell the shows. It's hard to sell the merch when you just got one music video out. And they were dropping music videos every week. But even then, they spent over probably 150000 And there's still work needs to be done to for him to be a, a full household name. And, you know, as a guy from Fayetteville, you know, we need him to succeed and go as high as he can go to the peaks of the mountains in the music business. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, well, I wish. That was what I right. Mean. Well, and I think that's a good point you said where like you had to, you have to spend 150 to get to the point where money's coming in. That doesn't mean you're done spending money. No, no. So, like, this is a yeah. very expensive industry. You can spend 750 or a million dollars to do this very easily. Like where? And we know that Tech Nine's business partner spent about two million before Tech Nine really got to where he was at. And now they've had a business that just rolls over year after year with the tours, the merchandise, the streams, any other physical product. Where does the bulk of that money go? Um for us it goes to digital ads. We test everything. So we're testing things digitally. We're testing usually five songs. Now, check this out. Even Wendy Day is saying everybody's testing things because what happens, new platforms come out. You know, at first you got MySpace. And we wasn't running ads on MySpace like that. In MySpace, I remember I could just contact cats like Diamond D, reply, phone number, Sedat X, uh, Rampage, Flip Mode. I mean, whoever, Lazy K. I mean, anybody who was hitting up, yo, what's good, you know, trying to get a drop. Uh, please send a drop here. Bam, they they call and doing the drop. Now you guess what? You got their number, and you got direct contact with MySpace. MySpace starts to fizzle out. What happens now? You got Twitter starts to come up for a short, just a few months. For a few months, Twitter like took over, and then Facebook like, oh, sorry, Twitter, we're top dogs. So now you got Twitter, you got Facebook, you got MySpace starting to fizzle out, but still a little traction. A lot of rock bands still using it. Then you got other things coming out like the SoundClouds and the Instagrams and the Audio Max and the Band Camps and so on. You know, and even YouTube started getting 
YouTube was no nope, YouTube wasn't even a thing really like that with MySpace. You know, YouTube started to get more traction. Um, I remember like I was doing Podomatic podcast, audio podcasts back in like early 2000s. It wasn't even cool to do podcasts then. And I quit for a while, got burnt out, ended up having to do the podcast by myself because my partner stopped doing the podcast and got burnt out. Wish I would have never stopped, you know. And now podcasts are the thing, you know what I'm saying? And that's another thing. You got podcasts, you got influencers, you got TikTok now. So you can run ads on, that's the thing. You got to test it out with all these, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube. I mean, you can sell physical merchandise on Pinterest. Pinterest is really good for selling t-shirts and, and cra- arts and craft things and, and whatnot. There's just so many of these platforms. Record labels don't know how to break music no more. Record labels had street teams and radio. Guess what? Street teams are a dying art, and pandemic kind of made it a dying art because it's still politicized where people, half of the, a lot of people still wear masks. And the people that wear masks ain't typically wanting you to hand them flyers and things of that nature. And they're not wanting to shake hands. And there, a lot of people don't even shake hands no more. There's a lot of fist bumping going on. We just fist bump. So, I mean, Wendy's right, man. You know, and with every artist, you know, is every artist is different if you're trying to get, you know, into the sub-genres of things. At a time, and we test for two weeks, we spend about 200 bucks, but it tells me which song is going to do better than another song. So Top we're still songs. putting out all the music, but it tells me where where to spend that budget. We're doing influencer marketing. We're shooting content. We're shooting videos. Our video. And if you're not shooting content on a daily, like the the standard is, I um, get on one of your platforms. Well, typically I like to start with TikTok. You get on TikTok. You do two or three TikToks a day. You take those TikToks and you're posting them to YouTube. You're posting them to Instagram. You're posting them to Facebook. You post them to Twitter. Bam. You're good to go. Content daily. And that's the thing. Artists, all they do is create music and music videos. Where's the daily content? You know, get in on get in on TikTok and lip sync all, you know, two or three lines to your song, you know, every single day. Pick a song, let's go two or three lines on this song, and do another song later that day, two or three lines on that song. You know, and that's the modern day music video, the short form music video. You save eight hundred to a thousand dollars. Just get in and do two or three lines, do a green screen background, throw some green screen effects. You know, that's content. So kind of like content. It's still music a music video, but it's certainly not as elaborate as most other people do. We spend about five hundred dollars on music videos, and then if the song starts to grow legs or really take off. We'll shoot like a second video for it. You hear that? You hear that? I like what she's saying. Because music videos are a dying thing. That's why it's the, the TikTok music videos. She's shooting a $500 music video. The song really takes traction, blows up because they're promoting five songs at one time. Damn. Guess what? Let's do even a, put a little bit more in a, put a, another music video. And that, that's the thing. You get now they're getting the fans, they get two music videos for the price of one. Where we'll spend maybe a couple thousand or a few thousand dollars on it because it it's deserving of that. I don't want to spend three thousand dollars on a video and then it tanks. It doesn't do well, it doesn't make sense. Well, that's a really good strategy, I think. Both from the standpoint of all right, I've got five singles. Let me test each one of these a little bit, see which yeah. you know horse wins the race, and then go more all in. Absolutely. On the and another good way to do that is now they got the the um, the discovery campaigns on Spotify. Now, not all distributors allow discovery campaigns. Like your distributor has to have it set up with Spotify, where when you release music after thirty days it's released, you can set up discovery campaigns each month. So you could get in there, and that's that's another thing. You take five songs on that and do the discovery campaign, and the songs that get the the highest. Listener increase and whatnot, or um, play increase. You take if there's, you know, like I, I was doing like five or six, and then you go in, and I had the top two that were just getting like a, you know, 
what, four to 500, 600% increase. I was like, right, let's roll with these two. And it made sense anyways, because I felt like they were the two better of the songs as well. And when that determines do, the budget. That whole 150 isn't spent on five songs. That 150 is spent over a year to a year and a half. So that 150 kind of fuels everything, you know, that, that that's going along. So, but we're working like five or six. So she's basically taking the whole 50, 150 for a year. And they're promoting five songs at a time on their budget. She's doing 150, $200 worth of ads here and there on five different songs. And the songs that seem to get more traction, oh, let's focus on this one. And if it even gets more traction, you know, after we do the $500 music video, let's do a two, $3,000 music video. And now the fans get even better and bigger music video. I like what she's saying. This is songs at a time. So we're looking to see which of those are going to poke their head up. And then we'll spend a percentage, like maybe the budget for those five songs is 30 grand. So two songs stand out. I'm going to spend 20,000 on, on two songs mm -hmm. and then the remaining 10,000 on the other three. It just yeah. tells me where to best allocate my limited dollars. Right. Where the best return might be. Absolutely. And <laughs> it hasn't been wrong yet. I'm still watching it because, you know, everything at some point changes. But right. for right now, that works for us. When you do that strategy with the music videos in similar kind of thing, you might make three, four or five videos and kind of see which song. Yes. Picks up. When you do make a second video, do you take down the original one? No. Like, no, you just leave it up. No. Of course not. And it's crazy that he asked that. What did I just say? No, they get two music videos for the price of one. I know. I already knew the answer to that. Hell no, you don't take down another music video. And the fact that he asked that, it just tells you he doesn't really he he don't get it and this guy you know it, I guess it's a good question to ask but he don't he don't truly understand no you keep the other one because what she said is instead of taking two thousand three thousand on one music video they're doing three music videos at once for like five hundred a pop so now they're spending fifteen hundred on three music videos and or if you're doing five they're doing twenty five hundred. You know, one music video each. If two of the songs pop, oh, now we're going to, you know, we'll do the ramp up the, or oh, one of the songs pop. We'll do a $2,000 or $3,000 music video for that. A whole nother music video because it's really gaining traction. It's starting to pop and whatnot. And yeah, because you keep, you keep all the kind, you know, you don't delete it. Yeah. Pretty cool. Because it, it really looks like content. My, my early music videos, the ones we spent 500 on, are usually the artists in just a bunch of different scenes, maybe two yeah. or three scenes, rapping on a basketball court, rapping right. in front of an old school car, and maybe in the trap with the boys behind them. So yeah. we're chopping Simple. them up to use, not only is it a music video for YouTube, but we're chop chopping them up and you're going to see it on shorts. You're going to see it on TikTok. You're going to see it on reels. You're going to see it on Instagram story. what I say? The new, that's what it's about. The short form clips and you don't give them the whole song. You give them a little taste, get them hooked. They want more. Tell them where to go. You're going to see it on Instagram. You're going to see it on Facebook. You're going to see it all over the place. So that $500 that we're spending, I'm not pulling it down because it's content. But the right. music video, you know, we'd rename it something. And and um, I'm trying to think of a creative name right now, and I'm not coming up with anything. But it might become, cut. you know, the <laughs> official music video yeah. in quotes, you know, yeah. or it might be, you know, official music video 2.0. It'll be a little more creative, but that's the one that will really go balls to the wall with promotions and marketing because we know the song warrants having that bigger video and then we'll market and promote that video you know as as larger than life right that's awesome I... everything she said man i mean i totally agree with it, it it's a whole new ballpark out there it's a whole new game you really got to test out the waters and all these joints. And another video I, I got to react to where a guy was talking about 
something I've already known. And I've been saying for over a year that like on Facebook, the number one country for engagement is the Philippines. And a lot of these pop and R&B artists, they're pretty much, um, that's the, one of their main markets, Philippines, Indonesia, and other Asia markets. So if you advertise in the U.S. only, right, you're going to spend more money on the ads and you're more likely going to get a less engagement because you're going to get less impressions, less in view, less views, you know, lesser impressions means lesser views, which means lesser engagement. More impressions means more views, which means more engagement. And U.S. is a bunch of haters anyways, you know, in the market. Some some people in the U.S. are just so hard to please. You know, they on Haterville, whatnot. So you got that. Philippines, you know, they're rolling out the red carpet for you on social media with engagement. I mean, when I advertise like New Little Apparel on there, like we have the T-shirts that are dog-based apparel T-shirts. And now we got the ones for cats, too. We we don't discriminate. Cats got litters, too. So we got the cat and the dog-based T-shirts. I'll advertise a picture of just like a, you know, cute-looking dog or cute looking cat and the engagement is like, and, and I mainly only advertise to women between specific ages and the engagement is through the roof. And now think about it. Now, if you're an artist and you, you blow up in say like the Philippines, well, number one, it costs more money for them to get you over there. So it means you're going to get paid more for the show. And it means the shows are also going to be bigger. They're going to be bigger. They're going to be bigger. They're not, you know, U.S. market is tough. I mean, only one rapper has ever sold out the Crown Coliseum. And that was hometown hero, J. Cole. Our beloved J. Cole. He's the only one that ever sold out. And... He ended up bringing out Drake and Jay-Z, but nobody even knew they were coming out. He didn't He didn't even need to put Drake and Jay-Z on the ticket to sell it out. He had Jeremiah and YG and I forgot who else, if there was anybody else. J. Cole sold it out, you know. I've just seen plenty of rappers come, you know, four or five rappers Two chain kind of name rappers at one time, and they ain't selling out no Crown Coliseum. All the people that sell out the Crown Coliseum are the ones that rent it out themselves and sell it out. They're the ones that are too big to be booked at the Crown Coliseum. There's not a hotel in Fayetteville big enough. To put them up in. That's why Jay-Z and Drake had to literally, after the show, they had to get on the, the, the private jet and fly out because there's they have to rent out the whole hotel, man, for them. There's no hotel big enough for Jay-Z or Drake in Fayetteville, North Carolina. I'm sorry, Fayetteville, but it's not. But, um, yeah, very interesting. And so are you cats that come to me with $200 and $300? at a time and think you're supposed to be getting a return on your investment. Please wake up and smell the Folgers, man. That's a delusional way of thinking. Wendy Day just told you, man, like 150,000 just to get to where you're generating revenue or hopefully it can start paying for itself somewhat. You know, and then you still got more work to do and spend more money into breaking you further and getting you become more of a household name. And we definitely know that when Moray was, they spent, I think, a hundred thousand more than that at least. And he's still not a household name. We want him to be, we need him to be, but he's still not a household name. And partially it has the timing of it where he couldn't do shows, he couldn't do the interviews. And I still think they should have at least allowed artists to do features with them. Like while the song's blowing up, if people want to pay him for features, let them pay him for features and take that money and, you know, to help put it back in, you know, pushing them and whatnot. 
but we'll see. We'll see. But yes, you talking about when I when I was doing FM radio back in the days for clients, because I don't really try to push my clients to FM radio. Because if you don't got the full FM radio run, that's why it costs you know so much money. You know, even when you're not doing online, you got to be going to every city that you're playing. Your music is playing in. And then you got to go to those cities and you got to request interviews while you're being played on a radio station, you know, and then after that, you got to talk to the network with the radio station and program directors and find out who's the show promoters in those towns and then network with them and let them know, like, look, we're getting as many spins on the station. You know, we just did an interview. Um, what's good with the show? Da, 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 da. And if not, still go in the city and, you know, try to sell merch and pass out flyers and CDs. That's the typical street team radio, you know, way. And that's expensive because you got to have money for hotels and travels and food and paying people to be on the street team and things of that nature, you know? So, um, yeah, man. And now you got the internet. Now you got YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, and whatever other platforms. And it's not even just about running ads on these platforms. You also got to pay influencers. It's about ads and influencers, ads and influencers. And that's expensive. I paid influencers up to a thousand dollars for a post thousand dollars for one post. Got crazy traction. The guy I paid for a post was actually on a YouTube video where the biggest TikToker, the biggest TikToker, was buying him a Tesla. Somebody else in the biggest TikToker, Charlie D'Amelio, bought him a Tesla on YouTube. I paid that guy for a thousand thousand dollars for a post. Um, his name's um, I want to say it's Markel Washington. I think it was Markel Washington. He did some posts where he did it back, flipped off a trampoline and did his dance and whatnot. It was a dance post. I paid eight hundred dollars for a post that wasn't even a dance. It was a guy with him and his girl doing like some relationship kind of thing. And they did a full like 60 seconds back then when everybody was only doing the, the 15 second joints, they did a full 60 seconds. Crazy traction, crazy traction. I've paid, I've took a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars and did a campaign for a client and got 10 million views off of um, the post. hundred dollars. I paid influencers. Three, three influencers, $20 a piece, got 9 million views off of one post, you know, but you got to, that's not enough. You got to pay all of them, all the whole list of them, you know, and if I got a thousand influencers getting $20 or more, I mean, that's $20,000 or more in influencers. You Like she's saying, you're talking about $100,000, $150,000, man with ads and influencers and you can't pay all the influencers at once. <clears throat> you can't pay them all at once. And when some of them are getting 5,000, 10,000 a post, you know, you got a thousand influencers. They all, and, and if they get $500,000 a post, I mean, yo man, that's a lot. That's a shit ton of money. That's a lot of fucking money, man. It's not guaranteed any one of those is going to break the song or pop the song. It, it It's more of a guaranteed if multiple influencers and multiple ads, like she's saying, you know. So, yes, I definitely love this video. It definitely brings validation to what I do and the fact that my clients – when they come to me, you know, and I try to, I'm a guy, I try to do as, as much as I can with whatever you give me. You know what I'm saying? I just told you, I took a hundred dollars and gotten 10 million views, not counting the likes, the comments, the reshares and the reshares could be the TikTok being reshared to Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube. We, there's no telling where people are resharing it to. And that's how you really go viral is off of the reshares. That's the number one engagement is when people are resharing your content to all these other, from that one specific platform to all these other platforms. That's when it really goes viral. That's how TikToks don't necessarily just go viral on TikTok. It's like, it's also like the, it goes viral on the other platforms as well. Because well, some people, they might, 
get their viral TikToks from Instagram or YouTube or Facebook. You know, but they usually carry across the board. You know what I'm saying? And whatnot. So artists need to create content on the daily. Two to three minimal posts, TikTok, Facebook Reels, Facebook Stories, Instagram Stories, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, and Twitter. Just to put the icing on the cake. Two to three contents a day. Post them all those platforms. Advertise, you know, five songs at a time if you can, you know. And if you only got a budget of, say, $100, 150 a month, I mean, you could you could split it up, you know, and test the waters and see what song gets more traction, which one gets more engagement, you know. But my advice is there's two kind of budgets. A wise man told me there's two kind of budgets, which you can afford and what you're willing to spend. I recommend to go off of what you can afford as an artist. And in the meantime, try to find an investor that's willing to spend. Go off of what you can afford. And, and in the meantime, trying to find an investor who's willing to spend. So once again, I'll thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Paul Picker Podcast. Don't forget that the video version goes to... YouTube, Facebook, Rumble, uh, BitChute, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. The audio version goes to Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Deezer, TuneIn, Stitcher, Slacker, iHeartRadio, Player FM, and much, much more. Just Google the name that you see above me and the name you see behind me, Paul Pickett, Paul Pickett Podcast. Peace, and I'm out.